Welcome to the IT Free Training video on installing Hyper-V Server. This video will look at how to install the free standalone version of Hyper-V. However, the same steps used in this video could also be used to install Hyper-V on Windows Server using the Server Core interface. At the end of this video, I will also look at how to administer a Hyper-V server that is not in the domain. I will now change to my computer running Windows 8.1 and start the ball rolling by looking at where and how to download Hyper-V Server. To download Hyper-V Server, I will first open Internet Explorer and open TechNet.com. If you have a look at the Microsoft Download Center, you will not be able to find this download. You will instead need to go to TechNet to download it. Once the home page is open, Next, select the Downloads option at the top of the page. Once the Downloads page is loaded, next select the option for Windows Server 2012 R2. By default, you will be taken to the section on Windows Server 2012. If I scroll up, this will take me to the section Hyper-V Server 2012 R2, which I will expand. In order to perform the download, I need to press the button Sign In and then enter in my username and password for TechNet. If you do not have a login for TechNet, you can create one for free. Once I'm signed in, the next step is to press the button Register to Continue. Pressing this button records with Microsoft that you downloaded the file. The details that Microsoft currently has recorded will be displayed. You are free to change these details. The only option that I need to configure here is which language I want to download. In this case, I will select English. At the bottom of the screen, I need next to press the Continue button to start the download. TechNet uses a Download Manager to download files, so this needs to be downloaded first. Once I click the link Download the Installer, I will then select the option to run the Download Manager. Once I accept the license agreement, the Download Manager will then ask where you want to save the download to. In this case, I will save the download to the desktop. You may also get a Windows Security Alert asking for changes to be made to the firewall. You should press the button Allow Access if this alert appears. Once I've completed the wizard, the download will be started. If you want to see the progress of the download, scroll to the top of the screen and you can see a black bar indicating how much the download has completed. The download is 1.9 gigabytes, so I will pause the video and return when the download is complete. The next step is to use the ISO that I just downloaded to install the Hyper-V server. In this case, I will transfer the ISO to a USB drive so that I can use that USB drive to perform the install. To do this, I will use a free software called Rufus. To access the software, I will enter the URL of the website into Internet Explorer. I have included the URL in the description of this video if you have trouble finding it. Once the website is open, I will scroll down to the bottom and select the link under Download to download the software. This software does not need to be installed, so I can press Run and run the software directly from the website. The software will first ask if you want to check for updates. Since I ran the software directly from the website, I will press No because I know I have the latest version. At the top of the screen, if you press the World icon, you can change the language that Rufus is using. In this case, I will leave it on the default of English. Under this, the device that you want to use needs to be selected. On this computer, I have one USB flash drive, so this will appear in the list. Next, I will go down toward the bottom and select the Optical Disk button. This will allow me to select the ISO image that I downloaded earlier. Once selected, the rest of the options I can leave as is, and then I can press the Start button. I will get a warning message telling me that all data on the USB flash drive will be lost. Once I press OK, the USB flash drive will be erased and replaced with the contents of the ISO image. This process does take a while to complete, so I will pause the video and return shortly. The ISO has now been copied to the USB flash drive and has been made bootable. I can now close Rufus. Next, I will remove the USB flash drive from this computer and place it in the server I want to install Hyper-V Server on. 
Once this is done, I will change to that computer and start it up. Since this computer does not have an operating system installed already, the computer will automatically boot off of the USB flash drive. The process of installing Hyper-V server is the same as Windows Server. Windows PE will be loaded, which will, in turn, be used to run setup just like if Windows Server was being installed. Once I'm past the welcome screen, on the next screen I will press the button Install Now to start the Hyper-V server install. Once the install has started, on the next screen I need to accept the license agreement. On the next screen, I need to select the second option to install a fresh copy of Windows since I will not be performing an upgrade in this case. Moving on to the next screen, I need to select where to install Hyper-V server. There is only one physical drive in this server, so I will accept the default and move on. The operating system will now be installed. You will notice that the setup was the same as Windows Server, however, I was not asked for the product key. Since Hyper-V Server is a free product, there is no need to enter in a product key. The process does take a while to complete, so I will pause the video and return shortly. Now that the server has restarted, I will need to enter in a password for the administrator and I will be logged into the server. Once I am logged into the server, I will be given a command prompt and the script sconfig will be run for me. sconfig is a script that allows some of the basic configuration of the server to be performed. To start with, I will change the computer name of the server. To do this, I will press 2 and then enter in the name of the server. I will not restart the computer at this time, so when prompted, I will press no. The next step is to configure the network adapter, so I will press 8 from the main menu to select the network settings submenu. The next step is to enter in the index number of the network adapter that you want to change. In this case, the network adapter I want to change has the index number of 12. On the next menu, I need to select what I want to configure. First, I need to configure an IP address, so I will enter in 1. Next, I will enter in S for static IP address, and then enter in an IP address. For the subnet mask, I will accept the default and then enter in an IP address for the gateway. Now that the IP address has been configured, I will select option 2 for DNS and then enter in an IP address for the DNS server. In this particular case, I will only use the one DNS server. This completes the basic network configuration, so I will press 4 to go back to the main menu. I will next enable Remote Desktop by entering in 7 from the menu. This is not a requirement to set up Hyper-V, however, having Remote Desktop enabled does make the server easier to manage. To enable Remote Desktop, I will enter in E for Enable, and then enter in 1 to select Network Level Authentication to be used for the security of the remote desktop connection. That's it for the network configuration. I will now select the command prompt and then run PowerShell. I first want to have a look at what roles and features are installed on this server. In order to do that, I will run the command Get Windows Feature followed by Filter More. This command will show all the roles and features that are currently installed on this server. You can see that the Hyper-V role is installed. If I scroll through the rest of the roles and features, you will see that there is a lot there, but not as many as a full install of Windows Server. If you want to install Hyper-V from the command line, for example, if you are using the core interface, run the command install Windows feature followed by the role that you want to install, which in this case would be Hyper-V. Notice that when I run the command, I get the message, no change needed. This is because the role is already installed. But you get the idea of how to install it if you needed to. The configuration is now complete for the server. I will go back to sconfig, and then select option 12 to reboot the server. This is required since I changed the name of the server earlier. The server will now reboot. To perform administration of Hyper-V on this server, I will now change to my computer running Windows 8.1. This computer is in a domain while the server is in a work group. In order to perform administration on the other server, a lot of changes need to be made. Microsoft has created a script that makes the process easy. 
To find the script, I will open Google and then do a search for HV Remote. The first result that I will open is the Microsoft page with the script. If you have trouble finding this page, I have left a link to it in the description of the video. Once the page is loaded, I will select the link for the script which I will download and save to a USB flash drive. In a moment, I will connect to the Hyper-V server. However, in order to do this, the server must be resolvable from this client. On your network, you would probably do this by creating a DNS record in your DNS server. In this case, I will add an entry to the local hosts file as a simple quick solution. To change the hosts file, I will right click the start menu and then select run. In the run box, I will enter in notepad to open it. Next, I will select open from the file menu. To access the hosts file, I need to open the Windows folder and then the System32 folder. In the System32 folder is a folder called Drivers, which I will open and then open a folder called etc. You will notice that no files appear because none of the files end in an extension that Notepad recognizes. To see the files, I will enter in the asterisk wildcard character period asterisk for the file name. This will show all the files in the folder. I can now select the hosts file and open it. To make the Hyper-V server resolvable, I will enter in the IP address of the server and then enter in the name of the server. Now that the entry has been entered, I will close Notepad and save the changes. The next step that I will do is make some configuration changes on the Hyper-V server using Remote Desktop. To do this, I will right click the start menu and select the search option. In the search box, I will enter in Remote and then select Remote Desktop Connection when it appears. Since I have made changes to the host file, I can now enter in the name of the Hyper-V server and Windows will be able to resolve it. All I need to do now is enter in the username administrator and its password. Since I do not have certificates set up in this network, I will get an error message saying that the remote computer could not be verified. In this case, it is safe to ignore this message and move on. I have removed the USB flash drive from the Windows 8.1 computer and placed it in the Hyper-V server. This will give me access to the HV remote script. To run the script, I will run C script from the USB flash drive followed by the script name hvremote.wsf. C script is software that runs scripts like this one. I need to add the parameter slash add followed by colon and the user to whom I want to give access to administer the Hyper-V server. In this case, I am using the local administrator account. Once I run the command, the required changes will be made to the Hyper-V server. The next changes I will need to make are to the Windows client, so I will minimize remote desktop. I will also remove the USB flash drive from the Hyper-V server and place it back in the Windows 8.1 client. Before I run the script, I first need to add the username and password of the Hyper-V server to the local computer. This allows tools like Hyper-V Manager to be able to connect to the server. To do this, I will right click on the start menu and then select the option for the command prompt. From the command prompt, I will run the command command key. This command allows usernames and passwords to be added to the local credentials manager on the client. The first parameter is slash add followed by colon and then the server name. The next parameter is slash user colon followed by the username which in this case is the administrator username. The last parameter is slash pass. This will cause the command to prompt for the user password when it is run. You will notice that when I run the command I will be prompted for a password which I will enter in. If I now right click on the start menu, I can next select search and then search for hyper. This will bring up the Hyper-V manager. If this does not appear for you, you will need to select the option turn Windows features on or off in the control panel and then add the feature Hyper-V management tools. From Hyper-V manager, I can right click Hyper-V manager and then select the option connect to server. For the server name, I will enter in the name of the Hyper-V server. 
Notice that it will be added to Hyper-V Manager, so Windows was able to find the server and also was able to access it. You will notice, however, that there is an error saying Access Denied. In order for Hyper-V Manager to work with a server that is not a member of the domain, some changes need to be made to the DCOM configuration. DCOM is a framework developed by Microsoft to access software components across networks. Lucky for us, the script that I downloaded earlier will make these changes for us. So, I will go back to the command prompt and run C script followed by the HV remote script. The only parameter that I need to add is slash anon decom colon grant. This will change decom on this client to allow the anonymous access required by the Hyper-V manager. Once the command has been run and the change is made, I can go back to Hyper-V Manager, right-click the computer, and select the Refresh option. You will notice that the Access Denied message is no longer present. I can also access other features on the Hyper-V server. For example, if I right-click on the server, I can start the new Virtual Machine Wizard. That covers it for installing the Hyper-V standalone server and how to perform remote administration on it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. I hope to see you in other videos in the Hyper-V course or other courses from us. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.